Jason, thank you so much for joining me and for doing a Speaking Truth to Youth video. I really appreciate it. I just have a few questions I want to ask you, and we'll start with, not that you're old by any means now, but <laughs> you started being an activist when you were really young. Yes. What motivated you to do that or what beliefs and events led you to take those actions? I wish I could say it was something as altruistic as wanting to actually help the environment or help my community. But the main thing that led me on this path was my mother. Um, she was a very large driving force in my life for as long as I can remember. She was always pushing me to be my best. She's actually the one that offered this opportunity to me of becoming a youth activist and testifying against the coal fire power plant in our community. And me being 10 years old, I didn't really understand the influence that I would have of in the following years. So all of this uh, kind of completely blindsided me at that point. I really just wanted to make my mom proud, stand in front of her crowd because I was always sort of a really brave kid in that sort of sense. But along the way, I learned how important environmental justice is to not only the human race, but to the earth as a whole. And that's just what, um, that's just what started me on this path, this journey that I am still on currently. It must have taken a certain amount of courage to kind of go down that path for you. What was that like? I'm always the one on the um, roller coaster first. I loved, I loved being in front of a crowd. It wasn't as anxiety inducing as it may be for other people. What does give you the courage and what guides you and keeps you motivated? It's kind of a, um, a whole melting pot of things. My family has um, been a great driving force for me lately, especially since my mother passed away a couple of years ago. They've just been very supportive of me. They've helped me um, through my, my mental health struggles uh, in dealing with the passing of my mother. And I've also had a lot of great support from my friends because they've just been helping me um, keep myself afloat, basically. And in the environmental sense, I've had a great uh, support from my community, my environmental justice community, especially my network and the people that I've um, met through all of my um, testimonies and rallies. I know a state senator here, her name is Marilyn Moore, and she actually offered to, to buy me dinner soon after she heard that my mother passed because she was thinking that, that me and my family would not be in the mood to uh, cook anything. So it's just little things like that that remind me of the great kindness in human hearts. And every time I think of them, I think I should pay their kindness forward by doing my best to help the community and help the environment so that our children and their children's children can live their fullest lives in the future. So can you talk a little bit about what you're doing currently as an activist? I actually stepped away from the um, activism front for a little bit because I am currently applying to colleges. I'm also focusing on school because, you know, I have, I have to keep those grades up so the colleges, you know, feel good about seeing me as one of their alumni. After I finish ap applying to colleges and get all of my results back, I do plan on jumping back into the environmental scenes, particularly with uh, Children's Environmental uh, Literacy Foundation, who I've been working with for the past couple of months, um, mainly doing webinars and interviews like these. But I do plan on getting more involved in another uh, more substantial problem, I suppose. Do you have thoughts about what that might be? Or I don't know if you've heard, but there is this... Um, not exactly an organization, but a movement called Stop Cop City happening over in Atlanta, Georgia. And basically a couple of weeks ago, a man was shot and killed while protesting Cop City, which uh, the city plans to tear down a large forest in Atlanta to put up basically this cop train facility. And while protesting, a man was shot down. It just immediately, immediately erupted even greater ire within that region. So I plan to reach out to some people um, that I know. Uh, I know Lynn uh, promised me that she would reach out to some people at Greenpeace to see if we could get connected with that, see if we could start a more connected protesting movement because they're organized very well so far, 
But I feel like reaching out to their people in power, particularly testifying within their town hall or um, city hall, would be a, a much better method than marching because I know marching does have its merits, but testifying also has a greater impact. And this has been my um, thing for the past year, actually, uh, not year, the past past three years, actually, getting children and not just children, but the activism community as a whole more intertwined with civic justice and civic education, because civic education and a social justice are deeply intertwined. You need to be able to speak to people in power in order to change things in your community. Actually, only nine states require high school uh, civic education to be taught, and most of them only require it to be taught for a year. Yes, there does need to be a larger outcry for civic education, particularly in high schools and possibly even younger, because these things uh, take a while to get deeply ingrained in our brains which I think they do need to take root. So what advice do you have for young activists? I think the most important thing is just to keep pushing. And I know that sounds a bit cliche, but it really is because finding the motivation to keep on keeping on, basically, in a world like this is very, very hard, especially through all the hardships of our personal lives and all of the ups and downs we might go through throughout life. It's just extremely difficult to want to keep devoting our energy and our time to things that we aren't immediately seeing the results of. But we have to remember that there are people in the future that are counting on us to make things better now. At some point, it's going to be too late. We can't just keep on going like we're going right now or else we're just not going to have a future. Thank you so much, Jason. It's been great to talk with you and good luck in all of your things that you're working on this spring. And I'm excited to see what you'll do once you hit the college trail. Thank you so much for the opportunity and taking the time to meet with me. Thanks very much. Great. Great.